Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Monday, March 30th, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. British Summer Time in London, 12.30 in Bermuda, 9.30 a.m. in Mexico City. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, 28 years ago today, outside of the Capitol Hilton, actually the Washington Hilton, John Hinckley um, took a shot at Ronald Reagan. He let six bullets loose. Uh, the President's press secretary was gravely wounded. A uh, Secret Service agent was wounded, as was a Washington, D.C. policeman. And uh, Reagan uh, was brought to George Washington University Hospital, where he underwent emergency surgery. That was 28 years ago. Hinckley is uh, still in jail. We have one breaking news. The Insurance Insider is reporting that Amlin is, in fact, still in the running to acquire uh, its rival, Chaucer Insurance Holdings. It apparently made an uh, offer valuing Chaucer at about 280 million pounds. There had been some suggestions earlier this month that Amlin had uh, dropped out of the running. As we know, uh, Brit insurance as well as the equity hedge fund Pamplona Capital uh, have put in bids for Chaucer but this is the first time now that it's been confirmed by the insurance insider that in fact Amlin remains uh, very strongly in the race in fact uh, the insider understands that Amlin and Brit have both submitted offers that value Chaucer at about 280 million pounds so uh, Amlin is very definitely in the bidding now to our May news. The stock market is down about 280 points as we start. It had seemed over the many, many months and years that uh, CEO Rick Wagoner at General Motors had had nine lives. Uh, time and again, the GM board kept reaffirming its support. However, last night his luck ran out, and he is now a casualty of the U.S. government's intervention. He was forced out by the Obama administration last night. The 56-year-old Wagoner had been a GM for 32 years. Uh, he stepped down effective immediately. He's been replaced, according to the company, by CEO Fritz Henderson, who is GM's vice chairman and chief operating officer. And according to General Motors, uh, a gentleman named Kent Cressa, who is a former chairman and CEO of Northrop Grumman, he will take over as interim chairman. And GM also said that new directors will make up a majority of GM's board uh, when a new slate is nominated for election at the company's annual meeting in August will be coming from outside the company. The management shakeup, according to several industry analysts, show that Obama is serious about forcing GM to change quickly. Uh, by all accounts, Wagoner had made progress in fixing General Motors. While CEO, he cut its American workforce from 177,000 down to about 92,000. However, in the past four years, General Motors has piled up about $82 billion in losses. About five or six minutes ago, uh, President Obama uh, concluded a press conference. Actually, he didn't take any questions. He and Secretary Geithner, as well as several others, uh, made an announcement indicating that uh, the recovery plan submitted by General Motors and Chrysler were both unacceptable and as a result were ineligible to receive any additional federal bailout money. Uh, part of the unacceptability to Washington resulted in the uh, termination of Wagner. Uh, what the uh, administration has done, it has given General Motors some 60 days in a last-ditch effort to get its house in order before they come back with a revised um, plan for spending increased money from the government Chrysler has only been given a 30-day window to complete its proposed partnership with Fiat. Uh, the government will offer them $6 billion to uh, Chrysler and Fiat if they can negotiate a deal before the time runs out. If the Chrysler-Fiat deal cannot be completed, the government plans to walk away, leaving Chrysler destined for a complete sell-off. So the administration is, has drawn a line in the sand here. and. Uh, it definitely is a little bit of a different tone, and I think the stock market's reflecting that. There's still a little bit of a state of disbelief that the administration might, in fact, let these companies go down. But the game plan is, at least according to the president, and he, he was interviewed yesterday on Face the Nation on CBS, 
that the companies have to be serious in putting forth the complete restructuring. And he's indicated that he wants to start with a completely blank piece of paper and wants to start from scratch. In the upper Midwest, it seems, it seems as if Fargo, North Dakota might have just dodged the big one. It's not easy, though. The Red River has begun to retreat a little bit from its highest levels. However, this afternoon, a 14-inch blizzard of snow is expected to hit the area, as well as 25-mile-per-hour winds that could whip the river into wave activity. Engineers are not so worried about the snow, but concerned that the waves could crash against the sandbag levees, further weakening them. The higher the wind, the higher the threat. The uh, expected snow has forecasters optimistic that by the time it starts melting, the river levels will have receded even more. Temperatures in the area are not expected to go above freezing again until next Thursday. The Red River did drop today down to about 39 and a half feet less than the record highs set earlier in the week, but it's still, it's still 22 feet above flood stage. City officials say they'll breathe easier when the river falls to 37 feet or lower, which they expect by next weekend. It will be a long week waiting to see if the levees quickly constructed last week by Fargo citizens can hold. The flooding, of course, was caused by an enormous winter snowfall that melted and combined with more precipitation to send the river to record levels. On Sunday, yesterday, helicopter crews sought to fortify the levees by dropping 11 one-ton sandbags near vulnerable areas of the dike system. Above them, an unmanned predator drone